Hello and welcome everyone. Today I'm going to be sharing how to create a CSS grid component in Figma. So before we get started, I actually just want to demo really quick what it looks like when we use auto layout to build a grid. So here I have a grid with various profile cards. And you can notice as I resize the width, all of the cards grow and shrink as I expect. However, if I want to take this grid from a four column to a two column layout, depending on my breakpoint, I will actually have to readjust the auto layouts within this grid in order to get the desired result. So I'll go ahead and show what that might look like. So if I go ahead and drag a duplicate, I can go ahead and begin to edit this grid. So I'm going to press enter just to go ahead and select each of the rows inside. And then I'll select these first two cards and frame them in an auto layout, which I'm going to name row. Then I'll select the second two cards there, go ahead and frame those, rename that to row as well. And I'll select these as well, again in auto layout, rename them to row. And finally, I'll select the last four, rename them to row as well. Now I'm just going to go ahead and select both of the rows within my grid, the original two rows, and I'm going to go ahead and ungroup those. Now we'll see that the rows I've created do in fact result in a two column layout, but I'm going to go ahead and switch this to fill container for each of the rows, and then press enter to select each of the cards and also switch those to fill container. Now I can resize this down to the appropriate width. And of course I could repeat this process for any number of columns that I would need for my grid layouts. But if you're someone like me who's constantly creating grid layouts, this process can become a little tedious if I'm constantly having to reframe my auto layouts. So now that we have an idea of why we might even want to do this in the first place, let's go ahead and get started. So I just want to quickly show the components we'll be using today. We have an avatar, the card, an icon button, and a few icons. But I actually want to draw your attention to this last one here. This is going to be our slot component. So in a previous video, I've shown how to create a slot component and also talked about the benefits of using a slot component. For this video, we're not going to get into how to create a slot component, but I will go ahead and select it here just so that you can see all there is to a slot is a text layer to say that it's a slot and then a background color on the top level frame. And really, the only purpose to use a slot component is to explicitly demonstrate that that component is able to be swapped out with any other component we might choose. Okay, so now that we have a base level of understanding of what the slot components are, let's go ahead and insert one into our canvas. So I'm just going to use the keyboard shortcut Shift I to go ahead and search for my slot and insert it right in. As soon as it's inserted, I want to go ahead and rename this to say slot one. And then we'll notice as soon as I drag a duplicate of this, it's going to automatically be renamed as slot two. This is going to be a huge time saver for us. And in a little while, we'll see exactly why it's important for each of these slots to be named just so. So with my two slots created, I'm going to go ahead and frame them in an auto layout using the keyboard shortcut Shift A. So I'll go ahead and zoom in just a little bit and I'll go ahead and select the second one. Once I've got it selected, I'm going to duplicate it a few times here. Um, and actually, let's do a few more. So I'm going to create a total of 12 slots. I'm going to go ahead and click Shift 2 to zoom back out. Now that I have my slots, I'm going to go ahead and just Command click and drag over the first six and frame them in an auto layout. I'll go ahead and call that frame row, and then I'll repeat this process for the remainder of the six slots. Again, that's Shift A to create an auto layout, and Command R to quickly be able to rename that layer. Once that's done, I'm going to press Shift Enter to select the top level frame and rename it Grid, and then I'll change the auto layout direction to Vertical. I'll go ahead and recenter here, and now we can see that as I resize, nothing is actually responsive yet. So I'll undo that, and I'm going to press Enter one time to select each of the rows inside of my grid, and I'll go ahead and change that to Fill Container. I'll press Enter one more time to select each of the slots within those rows, and also change it to Fill Container. This is going to allow for me to be able to resize my grid 
and have all of those slots respond exactly how I want. All right, so now that we've created our grid component, I can go ahead and select it and create some variants. For this variant that I just made, I'm gonna go ahead and call that four columns, and then I'll select the first one and call it six columns. Now I'm gonna select the whole variant group here and change this property to say columns. And I'm gonna give this whole thing some auto layout just so that I can easily rearrange them later on. Now that I've created my values for the four column layout, I'm gonna go ahead and reselect this grid and select the first four components here. Okay, so this is obviously not a four column layout yet. So all I have to do is select each of these four slots, go ahead and frame those with an auto layout. I'll select the last four slots and go ahead and put those in an auto layout. And finally, I'm gonna go ahead and select both of these slots here and these ones here. I'm just gonna go ahead and group those so that when I ungroup these two rows, their heights don't get distorted. And I'll go ahead and put those in an auto layout, press enter, ungroup them, and change that to a horizontal auto layout there. Now I'll select all three of these rows here, press command R, and now when I rename them, I'll see that I get a little modal since I'm renaming them in bulk. So I'll go ahead and change that to row, set all of three of these rows to fill container, press enter one time, set that to fill container, and I'll see that I have all of my slots here in the correct order. I'll go ahead and duplicate this one more time. This time I'm gonna call it two column, and I'll go ahead and resume here. So this time I'll select the first two, frame them in an auto layout, I'll frame these in an auto layout, and I'll continue that process for all of the slots, this time just doing two at a time. Perfect. Once that's done, I can go ahead and select all three of these rows and ungroup them. Now I can change all six of these new rows to say fill container, press enter, make sure that the slots are all fill container as well, and then go back up one layer to rename each of those rows. Now I'll zoom out one more time here and selecting this whole two column layout, I'll duplicate it one last time and change this to one column. Now that this is selected, all I have to do is press enter one time and ungroup all of the rows and we'll see that all the slots I previously had are still in the correct order. Now all that's left is to select each of the slots and change their width to fill container. And that's pretty much all there is to our grid component. So let's go ahead and check this out. I'm gonna zoom out and just bring over one instance of it and I'll resize it to about 320. Now I'll go ahead and zoom in here and I'm actually gonna press enter so I can select each of the slots inside and I'll search for my card component using the component instance swapper I'll go ahead and swap that out. Now if I select my grid component, we'll see that I have access to all of the different values that I've set for this property. So I can switch that to a two column, a four column, or a six column. And of course, all I have to do is just resize my component and all of my cards are responsive right from the start. Again, let's check out a four column layout here, beautiful. Now all I have to do is just keep switching between my different values there and I'm good to go. Awesome, so now let's go back to our example here. We'll see that if I were to update this to say one and two and then change from the one column to the two column layout, that text change gets preserved. I could go ahead and of course change these here to say nine and 12, I'm sorry, 11 and 12. So I'll go ahead and do that change this back to the one column layout, scroll all the way down to the bottom, and we'll see again that that text is preserved. So this is a really fun and convenient way to work. I hope that you guys are able to find some way to implement this into your own projects, and that this ends up saving you a lot of time from having to manually create all of these different grid layouts. But before we go, I actually wanna show you one more way that we can take this even further. So I'll go ahead and delete this, I'm gonna come back to my component here. I'll go ahead and remove the auto layout since we're gonna be putting some more grids off to the right. Before I create any more variants, I'm gonna create a new property. And this new property is gonna be called reverse. So of course in CSS, we can reverse the order of elements within our grids. So we're gonna recreate that same behavior. I'll go ahead and change this to false here because these will all be in their original order. So now I'll go ahead and select each one of these grids, 
duplicate them off to the right here and change that value to true. This first one's easy. I'm going to use a plugin to rearrange the order of these slots. So the plugin I'll be using today is called Sort Layers, and I'm going to go ahead and select the Reverse Layer Sort Order option. Once I've done that, you'll notice in the Layers panel, all of my layers have been reversed. So now I just have to do that for each one of these. In this case, I'm going to press Enter, and I actually need to reverse the rows, and then after that, I'll reverse the slots. So I can use Command Option P to rerun that plugin, and we'll see all the rows have been reversed. I'll press Enter, and again, rerun the plugin to reverse the layer order. So now if I select this one here, it should be one, two, three, four. And I'll do that one more time up here. Pressing Enter, rerunning the plugin, Enter one more time, and rerun the plugin. Finally, we'll do this here. We'll press Enter, rerun the plugin, Enter one more time, and run the plugin one more time. So now I can go ahead and zoom out. I'll insert one of these components here. Resize that down to 320. Go ahead and recenter there. Press Enter once to select all of the slots. Again, using the component instance swapper, I'm going to search for my card and plop that in. And now I'm going to go ahead and rename this to 1 and 2. And then I'll go all the way down to the bottom and name this 11 and 12. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and zoom out a little bit here. And I'm going to change this and reverse the order. And now we'll see that 12 and 11 are on top, 1 and 2 are on the bottom, and of course this works for any number or combination of layouts here. So if this was a four column layout, I have 12, 11, 1, 2, and 1. I can reverse that once again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 11, 12. So this is the grid component that I've been so excited to share with everyone. I hope you find it useful and that it's actually able to save you a lot of time from having to create all these different grid layouts on your own. Please let me know in the comments below if you plan to use this technique or if you think of any ways that I can improve my videos. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.